All right, so welcome again to the Harbor Connects Wishlist segment. Today we're taking a look at the Corsair H50 all-in-one water cooling solution. Now basically what this is meant for is people who want the benefits of a traditional water cooling system, whether it's the lower temperatures or the quieter system, and they either aren't familiar with how to assemble a water cooling system, or they don't want to have to go through the hassle and the increased cost of doing so. It rings in between $75 to $100, so it's meant to compete more with the higher end of the air cooling solutions. And I wouldn't say it's meant for serious overclockers. So we're going to open it up, check it out, assemble it in our system, and see what kind of improvements we can get. All right, so we're going to do the obligatory unboxing here. Up at the top, we have the paperwork with a giant stop sign, which is advertising for the Corsair RMA service and their help support, their tech support. Uh, we also have the instructions for AMD mounting for AM2 and AM3 sockets, and then Intel sockets 775, 1156, and 1366. And then we have the quick start guide here, which there's not a whole lot to it. It's basically just a rundown of how to install it all. Then we have the unit itself. Now what is cool is this unit is a CPU block and a pump all in one. That makes it really simple. It's just a two-piece operation. What you'll notice here is there is a copper base and it already has the thermal grease on it. What we have here is the radiator, which is, like I said, it's very simple. You have the radiator here. You have your, it's about a foot long worth of tubing. And then you have the block slash, slash pump up at the top. Now it's all powered by a CPU fan header, the traditional three pin style instead of a Molex connector. Also in the packaging, we have our fan screws. We also have all the mounting hardware here for all of your different socket types. So that is what is included. Very simple packaging. Now let's find out how tough it is to actually install. As for the instructions, we attach the plastic back plate, which is much easier if you have a case with a rear cutout. And then the metal retaining ring gets screwed in over the CPU socket. So after getting the bracket installed, the next step is to figure out exactly where we're going to put the radiator. Now actually, this is something you probably should have figured out before you even buy the unit, but the best spot is usually going to be over the rear 120 millimeter exhaust fan, which most cases do have. Now Corsair actually recommends that you install the fan as an intake fan, so you'll have their logo pointing towards the radiator. And because the screws are only this long, that is why you can't install a larger fan than the one they've provided because it goes right through the case, straight through the fan and into the radiator without damaging any of the fins. Now, as you can see, the process of installing the radiator isn't all that difficult. It's just a matter of making sure that you properly line up the screws and you don't damage any fins on the radiator. Make sure it's secured tight and from there, the next step is to install the pump and water block. So in order to actually install the block, the clip should be a little loose, and what it actually uses is a sort of a teeth style system. And you're just gonna make sure that the teeth match up with the holes in the block, and then you take your screwdriver and you secure it all down. And that's all there is to it. So for our stress test, we're using Prime 95 eight iterations because it's four cores, eight threads uh, for the CPU. We're using the Core i7-920 CPU, which runs natively at 2.66 gigahertz. And then we're gonna be overclocking it to 3.3 gigahertz, which isn't terribly stressful, but it's a modest overclock without getting too aggressive. Now at stock speeds, the temperatures with stock cooling, just the regular cool that it comes with the CPU, is just sitting under 60 degrees on most of the cores. So it is a little high under full load, but it's nothing unexpected. So we're gonna change it up, overclock it a bit, and let's see what we get. So at a 3.3 gigahertz overclock, we're sitting at a high of about a little over 70 degrees there, which isn't all that bad with stock cooling. However, we're gonna throw in the Corsair water cooler, we'll test it out at stock speeds, and then overclock it as well, and see what kind of benefits we can get. So even just with the stock clocks, we managed to drop our temperatures by about 10 degrees. Hopefully that will carry over when we overclock it and we'll see just as much, if not more, of an improvement. And this is where water cooling really shines. Overclocked at 3.3 gigahertz, you can see that it's hovering right around 55 degrees and we've hit highs of just under 60 degrees. That's 10 to 15 degrees cooler than with our stock cooling. 
All right, so that wraps up our look at the Corsair H50 water cooling system. Now I realize there's a lot more we could have done with this, like comparing the cooler to popular air coolers or other systems, etc. But you know what, I think that's best left to a full review and analysis rather than sort of the short video overview. Nevertheless, the H50 really seems to pull its weight. For the relatively low cost and ridiculously easy setup, you really do get a lot of value out of it. And it's a great first step for somebody who's looking to dive into the world of water cooling. And that's it. Guys, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed our videos and you want to see more. And please leave us feedback in the comments section about this cooler or if you have any requests for future topics. Thanks for watching.